Hello everybody, this is Ian from Scilabs and today I'm going to be going over the Scilabs Container Services. Scilabs has been developing these services in order to support HPC and enterprise performance competing usage of the Singularity Container Platform. These services include the Scilabs Remote Build Service, which allows end users of Singularity to build containers from an unprivileged environment, leveraging an infrastructure of secure build machines. The Scilabs Container Library, which implements centralized storage, management, and distribution of containers. And the Scilabs Key Service, which hosts signing and encryption public keys that allows Singularity end users to sign and verify SIF container images in a simple manner. In this video, I'll go through a workflow that builds a container with the remote build service, stores the container in the container library, mm -hmm. and downloads and verifies the container from the container library. In order to use these container services, you need Singularity 3.0, a Scilabs account, and a Scilabs API token. So here I am on GitHub and we can make sure that we're on the master branch. And within this branch, you'll find an install.md file, which gives instructions on how to set up a Golang environment and build Singularity. Access to Scilabs cloud services is through a Scilabs account. You can create a Scilabs account linked to a Google, GitHub, or Microsoft ID. To get started, browse to auth.scilabs.io and you'll be taken to an account management page where there's an option to log in. Click the button, sign into Scilabs. Assuming you haven't been here before, you'll be asked to choose whether to sign in using Google, GitHub, or Microsoft. Pick an option and then follow through with the authentication process with your provider. The consent screens will inform you of the information Scilabs will need to access from your respective account. In this case, I'll use my Google account since I'm already signed into Google. Next, you'll be asked to choose a Scilabs username. This username will be used to identify you in the Scilabs services. I'm going to go with Ian-Scilabs. Now you'll be taken back to the account management page. This time you're logged in with your new Scilabs account. In order to use the Scilabs services, we need to obtain an authorization token that Singularity 3.0 can use to identify itself. Go ahead and click the Manage My API Tokens button. At the next screen, enter a name for your new token and click the Create button. You'll be presented with the token in a copy and paste text box. It's quite long, so the easiest thing to do instead is to download it as a Scilabs token file. So go ahead and click the download button. So now I'm just going to hop over to a terminal. So because my web browser downloads to my downloads directory by default, I'm going to need to move my token to the .singularity directory within my home directory in order for Singularity 3.0 to be able to locate that token and use it. And we can make sure that that token was successfully copied using a cat command. And we can see that this is the same token that was on the website. It's important to keep your token file safe and secure. It's your key to the Scilabs cloud services, and you should take care to not inadvertently share it with others. I'm going to use chmod600 on this token file so that in case my home directory is shared with other users, they still can't see this token. Now that we have our token set up, we can use the remote builder. First, let's make sure we have Singularity 3.0 installed by running a version check. Great, now we can build an Alpine container using the remote builder. For this example, we'll use the Alpine image on Docker Hub. Notice that the syntax is the same as for Singularity 2.x, but we're passing the remote flag, which tells Singularity 3.0 to use the remote build service rather than building the image locally. The remote build service will stream console output as the build progresses, allowing you to monitor its progress. Also note that we are building a file with the extension .sif. SIF is the new Singularity 3.0 container format. You'll see a lot of debug output as 3.0 is a work in progress, but if all goes well, you'll have a new SIF image about 2 megabytes in size. We can run an ls command to make sure that's the case. And we can also run a command in the container to make sure everything acts as we'd expect. In this case, I'll use a cat slash etsy slash os dash release. And we can see that this is an Alpine container. Okay, let's go ahead and push our container up to the library with the singularity push command. In order to push to the library, we're going to use a URI that starts with library, colon slash slash, and then we're going to use our username which will be en scilabs in my case, followed by a name of a collection, which in this case will be cloud demo. After that, we'll specify the name of the container, which will be Alpine. Finally, we can specify a tag. In this case, I'll use 3.8, as that's the version of Alpine I built from. But if you don't specify a tag, this will just default to latest. 
So again, you'll see a bunch of debug information, but the push should complete without an error. And we can see that it did. Now let's jump back on the web and go to library.scilabs.io. On the front page, you see your Scilabs username listed. Go ahead and click that link. And now we see a list of collections, which include our cloud demo collection. We can go ahead and click that link. And now we have a list of containers in this collection. Right now, it's just the one container I pushed up earlier. We can go ahead and click the link to that container. And now I've reached the detailed information for the container where all versions will be listed. So if we had previously pushed up versions 3.6 and 3.7 and finally updated to 3.8, those versions would also be listed uh, by their tag. So here we can see the tag as well as a unique ID for the container and also the singularity pull command that would be required to pull this specific container. There's also a direct download button so we can just download our image directly through our web browser. This eases the workflow of downloading images from example a PC or a Mac and needing to run them on a non-internet connected Linux system. Singularity makes this easy by having container images stored as a single file compared to other runtimes that construct images at runtime from multiple cryptically named files. As a last task, let's go back to the library homepage and use the search bar to find a CentOS container. We can scroll down the search bar and type in CentOS and we'll get results back in terms of users and groups, collections and containers. We'll go ahead and look in the container section. Um, we'll see our CentOS container here, so we can click on that. And then we can copy this pull command so that we can download our container from our terminal. So now we can hop back over to our terminal and paste our command. This will start downloading our container. Since my internet's a bit slow, I'm going to fast forward through this so you don't have to wait. Now that we have our container downloaded, we can use the singularity verify command to make sure that our container is identical to the one stored in our library. Since we don't have the public key necessary to do this verification, Singularity will automatically retrieve the necessary public key from the Scilabs key service in order to verify this container. It's also possible to sign containers, but we'll cover this in a later video. And so we can see our container is authentic and identical to the one stored in the library. So now we can run a command within our container. I'm just going to cat the os-release file. and we can see that this is a CentOS container. We here at Scilabs hope you enjoyed this preview of the Scilabs container services. Please feel free to check out the alpha version yourself and let us know your thoughts and what features you'd like to see. Thanks for watching.